This house is full of living testimonies. Hallelujah! 14 years, 14 years, years for little phlegm. Times when we were lonely. But there's a song that there's a mile. I'm going to take a page from his old book that he used to sing all the time. She said, Deborah, you were alone for 14 years. But he was there all the time. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. One more time. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. Hallelujah! All Maria never leaves our side. If you want a title for today's message, it is not He Was There All the Time. But we did sing it already. He is watching over. That's the title of the message. All Maria is watching over. If we want to define the word to watch, I'm just going to give a brief definition. It is to lean over. To get the attention that you are leaning over to see. Brother Ben preached the message last week. A good word. How to get our Father's attention. Well, today, we have our Father's attention. He is watching over us all the time. And in times we were alone or we felt alone, the times where we didn't, we think we didn't feel his presence, he was there. Hallelujah. We're going to start out in Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs 15 verse 3. And I could read this verse and I could sit down. Because the word is true. And like Pastor Blackwell always like to say, you have not heard all this before. And maybe that is something I will like to say too. But verse 3 says, The eyes of Yahweh are in every place, watching the evil and the good. Can I sit down now? Or do we want some more? All Maria is watching the evil and the good. He's not just watching the bad things that we do. He's watching the bad things that we go through. Whether it be of our own fault or because he was bringing us through something. There's a quote once more on page of an old book of Isaac Williams. He's bringing me through to bring me to. In all those times, he is watching over. But there is a figure in the Bible who's gone through so much, suffered so much, 
that he feels like he doesn't want anyone to be with him. Have you gotten that point before? They were so low that any company, any company is bad company. I'm talking about Brother Job. Job chapter 7, verse 4. Brother Job went through a lot. And he did not know why. And I think that's something we can all relate. Especially when we're crying, we're pleading, and it seems like there's nothing answering. What it says here in verse 4, When I lie down, I say, When I'm going to rise, when am I going to rise? And the night be ended. For I have had my fill of tossing till dawn. When I lie down, I say, When shall I rise and the night be done? And I am full of tossings to and fro until the dawning of day. How many of us could not sleep? But if I'm, when you were praying for little Flem, when he was sick, when he was born, could you sleep? No. That's your child. Mama Audrey, when you were playing for phlegm, could you sleep? No. I know my mom could not sleep when I'm out and about. We all can relate hmm, to Job. He says in verse 5, My flesh is clothed with worms and clouds of dust. Oh, my skin is broken and become loathsome. Oh, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Can we imagine praying for the same thing for 14 years? For 30 years for some? Those days may feel like there's no hope. But some of us persevered because some of us if not all of us, got what we were praying for. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All of us got what we wanted through the Father's will. Yes. Those days that we thought had no hope, He was there watching over. Oh, verse 7, Oh, remember that my life is like a wind. Mine eyes shall see no more to see good. And the eye of him that sees me shall no more see. And thine eyes are upon me, but I am not. Sometimes the suffering that we're going through is all of it. That when we see people's eyes looking at us, we see their pity. We see the sadness in their eyes. We think they're not even looking at me anymore. They just see what I'm going through. They just see the suffering that I'm going through. But you know who sees through all of that? Almighty. Oh, yeah. He is watching us through all things. But sometimes we don't want him to watch. Sometimes we don't want him to see. Sometimes we are so caught up in our own guilt. Hmm? If we think we deserve what we're going through. In Psalms 35, verse 17. Sometimes we're just not satisfied. We don't want him to just keep watching. Right? Maybe we said this before. Elohim, Almighty Yah, how long will thou look on? Rescue now my soul from their destruction and my darlings from lions. And I will give thee thanks in the great congregation and I will praise thee among much people. Sometimes we make promises, huh? That if Almighty just brings me through this one time, 
I will testify. But did we testify? Have we testified? I have a small testimony. I got a truck two weeks ago. Been looking for it for weeks. But when I was bringing it home, that Friday evening, Friday afternoon, I was on I-55, I believe, and I was testing out the engine, as some of us might relate. So I was going 90, 95 miles an hour. I was in the left lane, and I was watching. I was paying attention. But on the right side, there was two cars, a red car and a white minivan. And I thought, I mean, I would think maybe I was a third of a mile behind that white minivan on the left lane. But all of a sudden, me going 95 miles an hour, that white minivan swerved left, almost hit the barrier on the left side, and then swerved right, thankfully, right in front of that red car. I know he fell asleep because he was able to pull over, and it was a guy just doing this. He was asleep on the wheel. But if I had been a few meters, yards closer, he would have hit me head on. And I would have fell on that barrier. That's a testimony. He was watching over me. I didn't have to ask. He already do it. Nobody but Yah can take care of that. Hallelujah. 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 But how many of us have gone through pretty much the same thing? Sometimes we take for granted the goodness of our Most High Yah. Hmm? We make promises and promises and promises. Oh, if you just grant me this vehicle, I will go to your Shabbat every time. If you give me this job, I will give you my portion every time. Just like David here said, if you will look on me and save me from my coming destruction, I will praise you in the great congregation. David was making promises. Hmm? He says, but Father, please do not be far from me. That's when real loneliness sets in. When you could be surrounded by brothers and sisters, by children, by our parents, but we can still feel so lonely. There was a song I was listening to the other day, and one of the lyrics said, the world can't see, but a painted face still cries. We may not see it. We may not even feel it from our brothers and sisters. But they might be crying on the inside while they're laughing with us on the outside. But I'm here to remind us that no matter how lonely it feels, that even if it doesn't feel like Almighty Yah is with us, he is always watching. 